Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another Timey Wimey Tuesday Doctor Who Closer Look. Today, we'll be checking out the animated reconstruction of story number 35 in the Doctor Who saga, The Faceless Ones, featuring the second Doctor. So, The Faceless Ones was not a story in which all the episodes were missing, just most of the episodes were missing. We had episodes 1 and 3 still in the archives, but episodes 2, 4, 5, and 6 are sadly lost in the time vortex somewhere. Um, there are, of course, some disparate clips out there and lots of photos and stuff like that. And, of course, the complete audio recordings, thanks to enterprising fans back in the 60s recording the actual audio from the episodes. So we've been able to enjoy it in audio form for many years and, of course, the novelization and so forth. But it isn't until now that we're able to enjoy the full, complete story brought back to life through the miracle of two-dimensional animation, essentially allowing us to enjoy it in as close to its original form as possible. Um, yeah, this is great. I really like this one a lot. I always enjoyed this story anyway, because it's kind of creepy and spooky. It feels a little bit like a Quatermass story, actually. But uh, great stuff. Love it. So let's check it out. I've got the snazzy Steelbook edition, which is which is pretty pretty nice. We'll take a look at all the other editions as well today on a closer look on Timey Wimey Tuesday on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. So for the longest time, the only way we could see anything of the Faceless Ones was on this. The Doctor Who Lost in Time collection, featuring all the orphaned episodes from the second Doctor's run. So this had episodes one and three, and that's all there was. So for the longest time, the only way we could enjoy the full story was this. The uh, complete audio recording, remastered by the BBC. I think it's narrated by Fraser Hines. And, um, yeah, so it gives you some bridging narration to explain what's going on, where it's not completely obvious from the audio. But at least you can enjoy the full story. And, you know, if you want to be really enterprising, you could just listen to the audio from the missing episodes and then watch the full two existing episodes on this. Or you could read the novelization... There you go. Or if you prefer audiobooks, you could listen to the audiobook read to you lovingly by Polly herself, Annika Wills. There you go. So that was our only options for the longest time. But now, thanks to these wonderful animated reconstructions, we can finally see the Faceless Ones in all its glory um, in as close as possible to what it might have looked like back in the 60s. So, yeah, it's great. I'm absolutely loving these animated reconstructions and um, can't wait to see more of them. So, just before we go down to the uh, table and take a look at the lovely Steelbook edition, uh, let's check out some of the other editions. So, we do, of course, have the DVD and Blu-ray editions here. Now, here in North America, we only get the DVDs, but uh, some good news there. The Blu-rays, which are only available in the UK, are actually region-free. There you go. So you can watch them on just about any player. I watch these on my PS4. My PS4 has no problem playing them. It's quite happy to do so. The PS3, however, will not play them. The only thing I can think of is an issue with the frame rate. Um, NTSC PS3 is only like 30 frames per second. PS4s, however, don't care as long as it's region free. So I'm uh, pretty sure these are done at 25 frames per second and that's where the issue comes in. So the PS4 has no problem with those other frame rates. Um, just again, as long as it's region free. So I can watch these on my PS4, no problem. And if you have a PS4 as well, you can watch them, no problem. So there you go. Um, as for other players, I don't know. <laughs> you have to look them up. But uh, as long as it can play 25 frames per second, I think you're, you're okay. Um, yeah, so I've been getting the Steelbook editions just because I really like the alternative artwork. And also the booklets that come with them actually have 
the regular artwork from the regular Blu-rays. So with the Steelbook, I get both versions of the artwork essentially, plus just the cool Steelbook. So the other thing that's kind of cool about the Region 2 and Region B, well, Region B, um, DVDs and Blu-rays is they have the reversible covers, which you can see here. So it lines up very nicely with your Region 2 Doctor Who DVD collection because it has the same cover design and the same font and everything. So there you go. Very nice. Um, the, the Region 1 DVD edition, however, does not have a reversible cover. Um, as you can see, the, uh, the Region 1 DVDs have different spine designs from what the Region 2 ones are like. So, uh, yeah, I don't know why they didn't just put a Region 1 style cover on the reverse, but, you know, I, they, they didn't. So, there you go. Um, quite frankly, it seems like these days we're lucky to be getting them at all in North America. But uh, sadly, we don't get the Blu-rays here. We only get the DVDs. So if you want the Blu-rays, you got to import them. I use a place called Rare Waves on Amazon. They do specialize in UK imports and often have pretty decent prices. Um, yeah, I was afraid I'd missed out on this one, actually. And I you know just kept looking and looking and couldn't find it. it just seemed to sell out immediately and then rare waves got a bunch of them in stock so i was like oh my god okay happened to have the money at the time so i snagged it as soon as i saw it there and uh really glad i did um i'm pretty much committed to getting all the animated ones in steelbook form now so if there's a steelbook that's the version i'm going to go for as always when it was first announced that the faceless ones was going to be the next animated adaptation we got this placeholder artwork which, I don't know, I like to collect these placeholders just for completion's sake. It's nice to have them. So, that's what it looked like. So, not much to look at, just the font they chose for the logo design. And, and there you go, just a little little bit of a tease. And then um, a few, I don't know, a month or two before it was actually released, they put out a trailer, which is just a short clip from the, uh, from the story to give us a look at what it looked like. So, very cool stuff. Some fans complained that there was a little bit of fiddling visually. Not so much with the, the style and camera work and whatnot, but uh, some things in the background of certain scenes. Yeah, there's a couple of wanted posters in the background uh, showing the master. And, you know, some anal fans were like, well, that wasn't in the original. They shouldn't have put that in there. That's not accurate to the original. The master wasn't in it yet. It's like, well... It's just a little Easter egg, guys. Come on. It doesn't have any impact whatsoever on the story or the presentation. It's just a bit of fun. You know, fun, that thing that some people like to have. Yeah, anyway, I thought it was a nice little Easter egg. That said, <laughs> let's head on down to the black table and take a closer look at the Steelbook edition of The Faceless Ones. Okay, and here we have the Steelbook edition of Doctor Who, The Faceless Ones. Very, very nice Steelbook edition. This is, uh, you know, after the gorgeous edition they did of the Macra Terror, I really wanted to get this. And, and seeing what cool things they did with the packaging, which we'll look at in just a sec here, um, I, I couldn't resist. I had to track this down. I had a little trouble finding it, actually. And then uh, there was a wonderful third-party seller that I use fairly often uh, called Rare Waves that sells a lot of stuff from the UK. Uh, they have an Amazon store. I think they have an eBay store as well. Uh, managed to get it through them for a pretty reasonable price. So let's just slide it out of the J pocket here. Ooh, look, extra tall TARDIS. <laughs> I never noticed that before. Oh, it's, it's like a pop-up book where... The, the, it just stretches it. Okay, that just, that's going to amuse me endlessly. All right, so here we go. So check this out. So we got this. Travel your way. With Chameleon Tours. And then on the back, travel our way. Ah, creepy. So this isn't really a, a wraparound cover, per se, like some of the other ones are. But it's more like two versions of the cover. We have the Earth version and the Chameleon version, the Alien version. So, pretty cool. So, inside, we have, uh, well, we have a, a little ad for Sophie Aldred's book, At Childhood's End. And what's this for? Uh, Doctor Who, The Edge of Time game. Very nice. 
And then of course we have a booklet. As always, this is the same booklet that comes with the regular Blu-ray edition. We'll take a look at this in a moment. In the meantime, we have three discs of content. So we got the black and white version with bonus content, the color version with bonus content, and then disc three, which is nothing but bonus content. And there is some artwork underneath the discs here. Let's just uh, pop the discs out and we'll take a quick peek. And there we go. So we have a chameleon and a, I guess, disguised chameleon. Very cool. Yeah, I really enjoyed this story a lot. Uh, it, it just has this really creepy vibe to it, um, which I dig. I like the creepiness. Just popping the discs back in here. And there we go. All right, so let's, uh, let's spread this open here, and you can see both of the covers. All right, and let's go over the extras here. So we got quite a bit of stuff. So, of course, as always, uh, we have all kinds of interesting info about the uh, original production as well as about the animated reconstruction that they've done. So it's very, very nice. Love these booklets, just a wealth of information. Look at all that, all the character models and stuff. That's, that's really cool that they included all that. So let's see what we have for special features here. We have audio commentary on episodes 1, 3, 4, 5, and 6. I don't know why they skipped episode 2, but okay. Um, featuring cast and crew from the original 1967 production. The commentary for the surviving episodes 1 and 3 and animation of episode uh, 4 sees cast members Annika Wills, Fraser Hines, and Chris Tranchell, who played Jenkins, Joined by Clive Doig, studio vision mixer on Doctor Who from 1963 to 1967. Episode 5's commentary features Toby Haydock in conversation with the late actor Bernard Kay, who played Crossland, in an interview originally recorded in February 2013. Finally, on Episode 6, original production designer Jeffrey Kirkland recalls his work on the serial, and Annika Wills rejoins Toby Haydock to discuss her departure from the series. Then we have episode reconstruction. So using surviving film frames, fragments of existing footage and set photographs are brought together with the original unedited audio and complete recordings of episodes one and three to reconstruct a presentation of the original now lost live action production of The Faceless Ones as seen by viewers of BBC One in 1967. Uh, produced by Derek Handley. Available to watch with or without an optional narration track read by Fraser Hines. So it's much like the Macro Terror where they did that. They had the reconstruction uh, with the photos and existing clips and such. Uh, this, of course, has two existing episodes. The Macro Terror had no existing episodes. But it's pretty cool. You can watch it just with the straight up, you know, uh, original audio. Or you can watch it with narration by Fraser Hines, Jamie himself. So it's basically, once again, the uh, the version that was released by BBC Audio on CD a few years back that had the narrated audio for you to listen to. Then we have a full set of the original camera scripts available to view by accessing your computer's DVD or Blu-ray ROM drive. I guess it'll be Blu-ray because that'll be on a Blu-ray disc. And of course, we have the alternative black and white presentation where it says, also available to view as black and white animated episodes in the 4x3 aspect ratio. So yeah, it's kind of interesting. So the the sort of default for these is to have them in color in 16 by 9 aspect ratio. But the alternative version, at least in this case, is black and white so much as it would have appeared back in the day. Um, in 4x3 aspect ratio, which is pretty cool that they give you that option. Um, once again, as with the Macro Terror, I have only watched this in black and white. I'll probably watch the color version at some point just out of curiosity. So let's just take a quick look on the back here. Yeah, so we've got a little bit more as well. Some additional extras that I don't know why they didn't mention them in the book. <laughs> did they mention them in the book? No, they did not mention them in the book. I don't know why. They seem to have skipped over some stuff for some reason. But there's some additional extras. Um, we also have stock footage from the original production. So we actually have high-definition scans of some of the original stock footage used, like of the planes and the airport and stuff, which is pretty cool. 
Uh, we also have Face to Face with the Faceless Ones, which is a making of special. Uh, you got a selection of the, uh, all the surviving film fragments, so all the clips that still exist. And you've also got a trailer for Fury from the Deep. So already they were planning the next one. Obviously, these are doing fairly well. So they got more on the way. All right, excellent. Well, let's put all of this back together here. So usually I just put these, there's no clips in the steel books, so I just put these in there, just kind of rest it in there nicely and close it up. And there we go. And if you'd like a slightly clearer look at the uh, the artwork on the steelbook, I do have a few high resolution scans, which they put out as uh, publicity pictures. So take a look at these here. So we got, um, so we of course have the front, Travel Your Way. Very nice. And then we have the back. Travel Our Way. And there you go. Just a couple of clearer looks for you. Yeah, so anyway, I like to be thorough. Hope you like those uh, slightly clearer looks. Just because, you know, the the... It's all kind of shiny there, so I figured, you know, with the scans, you can see the artwork just a smidge more clearly. And, you know, I like to give you all that I can. Oh, one thing I should mention here, you might recall with the Macro Terror, there was a third disc of material that was not included on the regular Blu-ray edition. Not so with the Faceless Ones. The Faceless Ones has all the same stuff in the Steelbook that you get in the regular Blu-ray edition. So the only thing that would be different would be the packaging. So this is purely a packaging difference. I get the Steelbooks because I like the alternative artwork. And I mean, you basically get the main Blu-ray artwork on the on the discs and on the cover. So I'm not really missing anything here. I'm basically, the way I see it is I'm, I'm kind of getting absolutely everything that they put out all in one tidy little package. But uh, yeah, if you were concerned about missing out on any disc-based content by getting the regular edition versus the Steelbook, you're not missing anything. Both of them have the exact same contents. The only difference is the packaging. And there you go. So I'm sure you'll agree, a pretty snazzy Steelbook edition. Uh, very, very happy to have that in my collection. Now, if you'd like to get any of the stuff I talked about in this video for your collection, I will include Amazon links uh, in the description down below. And big thanks to any of you who use my Amazon links because it does help to support the show very directly and lets me get stuff like this that I can talk about and do videos about for you. So thank you very much. Really appreciate the support, guys. Alrighty, well, that is it from me to you for now. So I will see you in two weeks for another Doctor Who Closer Look. What's it going to be? I don't know. Tune in and find out. Yeah got to have, you know, your Doctor Who cliffhanger, right? Like, what's it going to be? Oh, no. Will he survive until two weeks from now to do another closer look? Yes, I will, because I do them in advance. But anyway, thanks very much for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors. Be sure to catch me on Twitch. I stream just about every day, and I will see you next time. Until then, thanks for watching, and sayonara.